Let's learn about the value of pollinators and their habitat in urban areas with LEAD for Pollinators. Pollinator habitat is important in rural, suburban, and urban areas. Pollination by insects and animals is a valuable ecosystem service, providing a delicious, nutritious diet for humans and mammals. Pollination increases crop yield and protects the health of plants. Native pollinators evolved with native plants around the world. Honeybees are European immigrants to the United States and preferred the Old World crops. Native pollinators adapted to and for native plants and are specialists at increasing the crop yield and native plants. Insects play a vital role in the ecosystem, protecting us from insect pests, pollinating our food, pollinating the landscape for other living creatures, and helping the plants reproduce. When we use pesticides broadly across the landscape, we are killing the very beneficial insects that would address any pest insect problems. Pesticides take days, months, and years to actually break down and stop killing. One application of a pesticide continues to kill for days, months, and years depending on the chemical. Pesticides are not selective. They are meant to kill invertebrates, and honeybees and native pollinators, as well as mosquitoes, are invertebrates. There are nearly 4,000 species of pollinators in North America. There are 3,500 species of mosquitoes worldwide, and a few of them are actually pollinators as well. Only a few hundred species of mosquitoes feed on human blood. We can eliminate mosquito habitat and our risk to diseases mosquitoes may transmit by removing standing water in our gutters, bird baths, pool covers, and unused pools, toys, and other items left outside that can collect water. One cup of water can hold a thousand mosquito eggs. Remove mosquito habitat around your home and protect pollinators from the deadly applications of mosquito control pesticides. Pesticides typically used to address ant and termite issues are also toxic to bees and may have a half-life, continue to kill insect for more than 1,100 days from one application. Always read a pesticide label to determine the environmental hazards it may pose to you, your family, your pets, water, and beneficial insects. The use of glyphosate, the main chemical in herbicides, kills not only weeds in direct competition with a crop, but also the blooming plants in field borders and irrigation ditches, dramatically decreasing the available pollen and nectar diversity needed by pollinators. This reduced pollinator forage leads to poor nutrition, increasing the bee's susceptibility to diseases. If we had only called milkweed monarch's delight, we might appreciate the plant as much as monarchs need it for survival. Using a synthetic chemical such as the chemical glyphosate to kill the grass and weeds, like milkweed, has shown to be harmful to pollinators for up to 174 days from a single application. Choose an organic herbicide if that is your only choice to remove grass and weeds from your landscape. Research conducted by the Xerces Society in 2018 found an 86% decline in monarch butterflies. For every 160 monarchs 30 years ago, only one is left flying today due to overuse of pesticides and loss of habitat. Lawns are not high-quality soils. 
In urban and suburban areas, the front and backyard are made up of the dirt, gravel, sand, and clay that was dug out to create your basement. Healthy soils help to clean water, they clean the air by reducing dust. Healthy soils support healthy plants, which reduces soil erosion, and the plants can better survive drought. Healthy soils store carbon in diverse organic matter, supporting healthy soil. Pollinator habitat helps to support healthy soils. Native plants have an extensive root system, whereas the roots of typical grass lawns only reach an inch or two into the soil. Lawn chemicals applied to grass run off into the street, streams, rivers, and lakes, killing invertebrates in the water and making the water toxic for pollinators. Yes, pollinators also need water to drink. Mowing lawns is costly and constant. Grass lawns comprise one of the largest crops in the United States. Mowing lawns contributes to carbon emissions, producing 11 times as much pollution as a new car each time you mow the grass with a gasoline-powered mower. Grassy yards contribute to wasted water, since the shallow roots of grass do not hold on to enough rainwater to even sustain it. Fertilizers, pesticides, and weed killers simply run off the yard as the soil is too hard packed due to the shallow roots of grass, and the chemicals pollute our streams, rivers, and lakes. Clean water supports pollinators who also need water to drink and to cool their beehive. Clean water, free of fertilizers, weed killers, and other pesticides supports healthy fishing. And in Ohio, healthy fishing is a $1 billion industry. There are many resources to learn how and what to plant to support native pollinators and honeybees. This map will provide you with a list of region-specific trees, shrubs, and flowers to plant to support pollinators. Federal agencies and businesses promote guides to plant pollinator habitat. State and national nonprofits have programs for planting pollinator habitat and for making land management changes in cities and on college campuses to bee friendly communities. We can make change one yard at a time. Planting pollinator habitat provides diverse food for pollinators, reduces carbon emissions, provides habitat for other beneficial insects, including those predators of pest insects, reduces stormwater runoff, and regenerates the soil. Replacing your lawn makes sense for the environment, the local watershed, for conservation, climate protection, beautification, and for pollinators. The most important thing to remember when planting flower seeds is to not dig up your yard. Tilling the soil is not how Mother Nature plants seed. Mother Nature simply scatters the seeds on top of cleared soil. You do need to kill the grass and weeds in your yard. You can do so through solarization, sod removal, applying an organic herbicide, and burning off the grass and weeds with fire. If you are burning a field, please consult with your local fire department first for permission, protection, and if you really should use that method. We have three how-to webinars to help you learn how to plant pollinator habitat. Check our website for recorded webinars at leadforpollinators.org.
planting for pollinators is best and easiest through planting with seeds. Store-bought potted plants often contain pesticides toxic to pollinators. Check out the pollinator seed mixes at BBB Seed, Beauty Beyond Belief Seed, for native flower seeds for the western U.S. planting zones. Or visit OPN Seed for native pollinator mixes for eastern U.S. planting zones. OPN Seed has even developed mixes in support of beekeepers and honey production, but your native pollinators will love those seed mixes as well. Planting pollinator habitat attracts pollinators to the May through November food and habitat you provide. The value of pollinator habitat in urban and suburban areas is vital to a healthy and balanced ecosystem. We enjoy fruits, nuts, vegetables, and seeds because of pollinators. Native pollinators sustain our native plants. Pollinators help with pest control. Overuse, misuse, and the half-life of toxic pesticides destroys pollinator forage like dandelions and milkweed and decimates populations of pollinators who are vital to our food security. Native plants reduce soil erosion, reduce stormwater runoff, survive droughts, and support cleaner water. By reducing or replacing lawns with pollinator-supportive plants, we reduce carbon emissions due to less lawn mowing. Pollinator habitats can be certified and award-winning, as well as educate your neighbors about the value of pollinators and your habitat. Pollinator habitat, making the best use of our land for urban gardens, cleaner water, reduced carbon emissions, and for pollinators. Thank you for joining us to learn how to value and protect a balanced, diverse ecosystem and our honeybees and native pollinators. You can learn more about the work of LEAD for Pollinators on our website and on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Plant for pollinators today.